This video is going to show how I make a baby jacket from a newborn to a six month size out of just one ball of baby blossom. Uh, it takes a little bit of finagling, but it can be done. As you can see here, I like to do it to where the first two sets of baby blossom flowers is above the armhole, which is all done within the yoke. If it's not, it comes down into this area and you have to do a lot more adjusting in order to get uh, these flowers to line up. Now what I used to do is I would start with the darkest area of um, the baby blossom, but I found out recently uh, they rearranged their production so the darkest area doesn't work. Now when I do it with the darkest area, it comes out like this, which is down below. So what I'll do is I get a ball. Now this one doesn't show it very well. This is the lavender. This is one whole ball of baby blossom after I wound it on my wool winder. I like to do it on the wool winder because that shows me where all the color variations break because that's the deciding factor as to what to do when. So I'm going to use this blue. I know it's a smaller one, but you can actually see the darkest color in here and you can see the flowers. Now, say if this was a whole ball and I was getting ready to start with this, the first thing I would do is I would wind up all the excess yarn that I will not be using. So I'd wind it until I was past this darker section. I'll do it as quick as I can because I hate to drag it out too long. Because uh, all this, we will use it on another part of the project. So we're not going to lose it. We will use it. It's just will not be used at this point. And then you get into the solid area, which I'm about ready to get into. Here we go. Now we're into the solid blue. And you can see on this little ball how it turns into a solid blue. And you just keep winding. I said this will not go to waste. We will be using this. It just will not be used when we start with the baby jacket. So we keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay, now we're getting into the darker blue. As you can see, the darker blue is right there. I'm hoping the colors show pretty good. If you wind it, you can all of a sudden, you'll see it start changing into a darker shade. It may not show up as well on here, but I, I wish it would have. But we'll just keep winding because um, we will use it. Okay, we're getting into the darker shades now. You can see it's not pale like this, it's a little bit darker. So just keep winding. I will go through each stage as I make the jacket. I make the jacket first, then I make the hat, then the booties, and then the mittens. And you can actually get all the pieces out of one ball. We're just about into the lighter colors, you can see. It's still pretty dark right here. But you can see it's starting to get light. There we are. It's really starting to get light. Okay, this is a lighter section. You can see it's a little bit lighter. You would cut your yarn at this point. And when you cut your yarn, you would actually start making your baby jacket. You would cast on however many stitches you need. This is the lighter section. The darker is just above it. I don't think I... Here's some of the dark. See the difference? The darker is a little bit darker. You want to go past the darker and get into the next section of light. And when you do that, you actually will wind up with the first blossoms and the second blossoms at the end of the yoke because the yoke ends just past the third buttonhole. So you would work into that point. Of course, you'd have to break the yarn off, as my directions say. Once you break the yarn off, you slide all the way over. I won't actually be knitting this. In the next section, we will knit this. But you slide all these over to your marker. There we are. Because the next thing we're going to do will be the sleeve. So you pull over your yarn, and as you can see, it's the lighter area, which is where I cut it off. And that's where you're going to start. You're going to start with the lighter yarn and work your way up the sleeve. This is the Star Stitch Baby Jacket. That's the one I'm doing at this point. You can use any baby jacket pattern. This is a raglan pattern, so that's how come it works the way it does. Now, when you get to the end of the yoke on my pattern, I suggest you cut a length of yarn off. So when you go to connect the new yarn 
for the underarm and the body, you can go all the way across to about this point and attach your new yarn. That way you don't have an attachment on the very edge of your border, which would show. So that's why I do this. And I wrap it around a paper bag, plastic tab. That way it stays put. Now where I cut this off, that's where I would begin making the sleeve. I would cast on my three stitches, knit across, cast on the other three stitches, and then purl back. And after I purl back, I will put a little marker on the first roll, or I should say the last roll of the yoke, because I take about 34 rolls, I think, in order to do the next portion of the sleeve. So by putting a marker here, I can count up 10 rolls and put another marker, count up 10 rolls and put another marker, and I don't have to use a piece of paper and make little hashtag marks. And as you can see, I'm still using the same ball of yarn. I have not changed. I will use this whole ball of yarn to make the jacket, a matching hat, a pair of booties, and a pair of mittens, all using the same yarn. And it's really neat the way it works out, but it does. And uh, as I progress, I will show you each step as I go. All right, I have finished working with the light color yarn that was still connected to the ball. The pattern at, for this size says work it for five and a half inches before you do the sleeve, the sleeve here. But since I'm putting the flowers on it, which is about six rolls, which equals one inch. So instead of measuring out five and a half inches, I only measured it to four and a half, which for me is 34 rolls. As you can see, I put little markers every 10 rolls. I changed it to green to make it easier to see. Also, when I hit about the 20 roll mark, I switched to straight needles. It's so much easier to measure it laying flat than have it crumpled up on your circular needle. So once you've got this done, you cut your thread or your yarn. Now you have your ball. At this point you want to wind up, let me put this back down, wind up all your leftover yarn because at this point you're not going to use this, what's left over at this point. You may use it later on, you may not use it at all. But we want to get to the actual flowers. So we need to pull this out. It's not that much. And I'm just about there. I met my flowers now. As you can see, the flowers have started. What I would do is cut this and connect the flowers. Once I connect the flowers, I will show you the next step. I'd like to show you the two different options. If you start at the beginning where the flowers are, like I'm doing here, you're going to have nothing but flowers, like you can see on the blue one. It doesn't get into any green leaves until you hit about roll six. If you instead take it out until you get to green, you're going to get something more like this to where you're going to have a combination of green and red. So the option is yours. I'd rather take it to where I have a little bit of the green showing in mine too. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to show you what it looks like with the green. Okay, after you get the six rolls of your blossoms done, then you need to cut your yarn. Now what I do is I pull this all the way out with all these odd little pieces of green and I cut it off at that point. Because when you get ready to start the second sleeve, you want it to start with the same pale color as you started the first sleeve. Now that means you have to figure out how to finish off your top edge here, which is your little decorative piece. What I generally do is get some of the original that you wound off in the beginning where you had to wind it until you got to your flowers. And I reverse the wind because when you wind it, a lot of times the dark is first and the light is at the end. And I like to do the sleeve, bottom of the sleeve with the darkest piece. So at this point, I will connect the dark and I would finish up my sleeve with that. I will show you that in the next step. All right, I've got the sleeve finished. I went ahead and got the border done in the darker color. I do still have some left. I'll hang on to it. I may use it in the future. Uh, I did stop when we cut this off earlier. That is where I will begin the other sleeve. You want to start both sleeves in the same spot. That way your coloration will roughly repeat itself. 
Uh, now, the next thing I like to mention is now we've got two sets of tails here. There's many different ways you can finish them off. Some ladies do not do knots because there's no knots in knitting. However, I'm not one of those ladies. I don't mind doing a knot, especially on a little kid's jacket because I want to make sure nothing happens to it and it comes undone. So what I do is a square knot. You would put the right tail over the left and pull it tight. And then you put the left tail over the right and pull it tight. Now that makes a square knot and it doesn't come undone. What I like about it is it allows the tails to lay flat. So once you sew your seams up, you can weave one tail this way in your seam and one tail up this way in your seam. And we'll do the same with this. Okay, same thing. You put the right tail over the left and pull it tight. Not super tight, but snug. And then you put the left tail over the right and pull it snug. So now those are ready to be woven when we get ready to seam it together. Okay, as you can see, I have the second sleeve done. So now I have both sleeves matching. I've got the little tabs on here. One good thing about these little tabs is when you get to the 10th row, you know you have to do a decrease on either side. And these little safety pins remind you. So every 10 rows, I put a safety pin and I do my decrease. So it's a great way to do it. Then I attached my flowers and did my six rows of flowers and then I did my border. Now if you notice the borders are not quite the same color, it's because the piece I had started to get light. I could have waited and put these on the stitch holder until another piece came up that was dark, but I decided this is fine. It's not going to really show. So our next segment is going to be doing the, the body. So you'd start with where we had the little piece on the little tab and we're going to start working around and once we get that piece used up we're going to start on our ball at this point our ball has a little bit of the green left over so we take the green out and hang on to it we may use it for something else down the line but as you see we're back on that light tank light color again which matches where we left off the whole ball will be used in this fashion as you go through each phase of the colors the next section will be done like uh, for example we're going to start here with the light peachy color and as we work our way through this next set of dark floral colors will be here and then we work our way to the next set and when I get to this point I'll stop and I'll show you how I handle this part before I get to the final bottom part. Also when you see it this ball is not going to be this big right now it's very big and loose because I've used up so much yarn and if I leave it this way it'll have it has a tendency to tangle on me. So I pull out my wool winder and I wind it up on my wool winder and next time you see it, it's going to be that size. Okay, I now have the back knitted uh, with the 34 rolls like I did before. There's my little markers. Uh, this is where things have to change. You can make your own decision. I want to have this floral border just before the decorative border. I don't like having the floral border in there because when the floral border is in the actual star stitch like I have here. You really can't see the star stitch too well, but in the little baby mittens, I don't worry about it, but I really just don't like to have it here. So I'm at the point where I can either keep going with the color that is next in line, which is the pale color just before the flowers, because you can see the flowers are starting to peek out. And as you can tell, I rewound the ball. Like I said, it's going to be roughly the same size as the blue one. This way it's not as bulky. So what I'm going to do is I went ahead and knitted one more roll so I have 35 rolls. I'm going to cut the yarn at this point. And then I'm going to unravel this. Now all this yarn I undo I hang on to because it can be used as the projects go on because once this is done you still use the same ball from the stopping point um, from the jacket and you'll do the hat and then you'll do the two um, booties and then the two mittens and we should all be able to get it out of this ball as long as we keep with this same routine or process. All right, so I'm going to wind this up. Like I said, I'm going to hang on to it because you never know when you need a little bit of yarn for something, an extra roll or two to finish off a line or a half an inch or whatever it is that you're working on. So I always hang on to this. It could be used to make a mitten because it doesn't take a lot to make a mitten. Okay, there it is. There's the red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a little ways, 
hang on to my little ball. I've got about four of these now. Set this aside real quick. And I don't like to start on the very edge like I didn't like to start on the edge here. If you notice, here's where I actually wound up joining it. It was actually in the middle. It wasn't close to the sleeve like I had planned, but I just couldn't see throwing out that much yarn just to make it stop here. So I went ahead and just stopped it where it stopped. I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm going to pick it up and knit because the first five stitches are always knit. And I don't want the new yarn to start in a knit roll on the back because then it would be actually be on the front of my work and I don't want it on the front of my work. So I'll take it back a little ways into the purl part of the project, even if it's only three or four stitches, just enough to get it away from the edge because I really like my edges to be nice and smooth. They look so much more professional when it's done that way and people can't figure out how you did it so beautifully. Okay, now I've got this little piece, which is okay. I'm going to add this to it. I know the color would be just slightly off, but I'm, that's why I'm bringing out the red right to where I'm joining my new yarn. I'll do a little bit. I'm not going to do a whole bunch because that's not necessary. You'll get the idea. Since this last roll from the ball I did is slightly pale in color, as you can see, it's lighter than the rest. It was just starting to get into the actual floral part. So I'm, it's not going to really make that much of a difference. If you did not want it to do this, you could have always just knitted with the other yarn that I wound off of it and just went until you got to the border part. Just make sure that you didn't have any flowers that go into the border. Or you can have the flowers go into the border. It's entirely up to you how you wish to make your jacket work. I just like to hang on to the flowers and put them where they really will look their best. Okay, I'm far enough along now. I can turn my work and as you can see, it doesn't look bad. I'll go ahead and finish up the flowers and come back and show you what it looks like just before I do the border. Okay, I've got the flower part done and I started working on the border. Now I have two choices for the border. A lot of times I like to do the border in a dark colors. It just makes them stand out better, but in some cases I can't. Like here, I need about 12 rolls, 12-ish to do the border. And if I count from here to here, this whole section is about 12 rolls, which includes the dark, which I would have liked to have done on the hat. Well, in this case, I'm going to have to make the decision of leaving the dark within these 12 rolls. So I have the dark in the border here. The good part is, once I finish with the pale color, I'm to a flower section. And this flower section is what we'll take off and use on the tops of the mittens. So this set of flowers is not going to go to waste. We do have another use for it. Now when you get to the end, if you do run out of yarn and you need a little more, because sometimes it gets off by a roll or so, you still got that pail that we took off shortly a few minutes ago when we did taking it off here. So hang on to this. You might have to use it at the end. You may not because you only need 12 rolls and this total is maybe 13. So we'll see what happens when we get to that point. All right, I've got the bottom finished. I, as we did earlier, we joined uh, this flower section to the uh, darker section because I wanted to make sure the flowers ended at the six row mark before we started the border. Now I could have taken some of the light off and did it all in the dark, but sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where the dark starts and stops because as you see here, all the dark is missing. All I have left now is the lighter color. So I just stopped it at that. That works good. Uh, you can rearrange things any way you want. Uh, that's just what I chose to do with this one. Now the next question is, what do I do about this hole? Well, this is where I joined the two threads together earlier. Now, you know, as they always say, there's no knots in knitting. Well, I like to make a knot because I like to make sure, especially in the center of a garment, nothing happens to it. So I will do my square knot right over left and pull it a little bit. Then I check the front to make sure it's laying nice, which it is. And then I go one step further, especially with baby garments and kids garments, because they can be pretty rough on it. 
I grab a bottle of my flexible stitch fabric glue uh, and use it just a little drop right where the first part of the square stitch square um, knot is just a smidgen you can can't even really see it's there when this dries it never comes undone it's permanent now you do left over right and pull it tight and then you let it totally dry once it's totally dry you can't even tell where your connection was I can go back to this one like this one here I did that little drop of glue on and you can feel the glue but it's still a great way to lock it in place now I could take the time to weave these tails in but as the garments worn and stretched the tails can um, come unwoven so by putting that drop of glue I can cut the thread right at the knot there now you can't even see it well see it a little bit because we know we're looking for it but you can't see it on the other side that's just one of the little things I like to do now this garment is done all that's left would be to weave in all my tails, sew up my arm sleeves, and add the buttons. Okay, so we'll put this aside because that you already know how to do. All right, now we're on to the next part. The next thing we're going to do it will be the hat. Now the hat we pick up from where we left off. First thing I do is I wind all the thread out all the way through the flowers because we're going to use the flowers like I said earlier on the mittens so we need to get this yarn out of the way and then we have a choice how we want to handle this now first thing I do is I get all the way to the yarn uh, with the flowers here we go and I go back about maybe a foot and cut it now I wrap, wrap up the flowers because we're going to use this later I tell you the reason why I added that extra foot on when we get ready to actually make the mittens so for now we're just going to wrap up this yarn and use it on the mittens we finish winding it really quick there we go we're just about done and same thing add about a foot and cut it so now we're going to hang on to this for the mittens or for instead of the mittens we can use it for this part of the hat I mean it's very flexible we still have additional pieces of the um, flowers so we can use those on the booties because that'll would that'll be on the next one but right now we want to get ready to do the hat so at this point we would use this yarn cast on the amount of stitches needed to make the hat depending on what size you're making do four repeats of the star stitch in this lighter color yarn until we get up to this last ridge once we get there we'll finish working on the hat okay I've now started my hat I actually put a little more off than I should have when I was pulling it out of here I only should have pulled out about four feet and cut it off and had the only four feet set in here that would have put the flowers up about two more rolls which would make the whole hat go up a little higher before the next set of flowers wants to creep in and we don't want this extra set of flowers to creep in the top because we want to use those extra set of flowers for the first booty there's just enough flower sections in one ball to be able to do the hat two booties the mittens and the jacket and if you allow this extra to be here you're going to run short so uh, what I do is when I get near the end of the hat if it looks like I'm going to go into the next flower section which is right here I will use this little bit of yarn that I pulled off from the bottom so when I get to that part I'll start again okay I've finished the hat up to uh, the five and a half inch mark now I'm ready to start the crown but as you can see I'm at the point where they're starting to bring the colors in and we don't want to use these colors on the hat because we need this next set of colors for the booty so that's where the little ball of yarn that we actually had rolled off earlier will come in handy I'll attach it here and go ahead and finish the crown with this and when I get back we'll start working on the booty 
Okay, now we're ready to start the next segment, which is the booties and the mittens. And this is a yarn that I have left over. I have the one that's still left on the ball, which will do the first booty. And then I'll have one of the leftover floral ones with all these other leftover pieces, which will do the other booty. And I'm most likely going to use this one. And this last one up here is the one that we added the extra 6 to 12 inches on either end of the uh, flowers and that will do the two tops for the mittens if you decide to do it. If you don't want to do the two tops for the mittens out of that, there's still going to be plenty of this left over. So as you can see, one ball of this yarn will make a complete set. There's generally nine sets of the flowers. If you want to count, you can do it. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. The one on the hat here makes seven, and the one for the mittens is eight, and the last one here is for the booties along with this one, which makes nine. So I'll, I'll get the booty started, and we'll go to the next phase. Okay, I'm back. I finished the first um, booty. As you can see, that little bit of um, floral that I had from the other ball. This is all that's left of the other ball that you've seen just a short while ago. Uh, so there's the, the floral part and all the way to the dark. The other dark is right there. And when I rewound it up, I wanted to put the dark on the inside so I could either use this oddball that I have left and connect it to this one, or I can connect it to this one. But either one is more than enough to finish the second booty. And we still have that odd bunch left over for the mitten. Now there's a way that I cut this apart in order to have an equal amounts for both mittens. I'll show you that next. But first I need to finish the other booty. Once your second booty is done, now all that's left would be to sew them together. So here's a set that I've done that are sewn together. Now I used, this was the leftover yarn like uh, I was telling you about. The next will be your mittens. Now I'm using a smaller piece of odd yarn that I have left to show how I divide up that last bit because it's quite a bit and I want to divide it between the two. So what you do is you take that piece of yarn that you have set aside for your other set of flowers, put your two ends together, and then cut it in half. And once you cut it in half, you wind the one up, pretty straightforward. Set it aside and then wind the second one up. Now you have the flower part of the yarn to do the two hot tops. So then you take some of your leftover yarn, which you still have some left over, and attach one to it, one to the one flower one, and then you attach the other one to the flower one, and you still may have a little bit left over, and you have to decide how you want to do it. You can have them where they're all dark and maybe a little touch of light at the bottom, or you can have them to where they are light at the top and they get darker at the bottom. It looks like mostly what I have here is light yarn, so I'll probably start with the light stuff and then fill in with this when I get to that point. So I'm going to head start the last two items with the last little bit of yarn and uh, the project will be complete. Now if you want to see how the booties are done or how I actually knit them because I didn't show in the, this video how to knit them, I do have another one out there show how to do the Star Stitch Baby booties and it shows you all the different steps of how to do it on straight needles and you don't have to use stitch holders or circular needles or any fancy things, just the two nine, nine to 10 inch long size six needles. I forgot to say, when you cut them apart, one end is gonna have a lot of red and the other end on the other side will have a lot of green. And the multicolor part is which would have been actually the middle of the yarn that you cut in half. So you want to start it with the multicolor part and that way you'll end it with either the red or the green. Now if you look at the booties you'll see the top of the booties is mostly red and the bottom of the booties is mostly green with the green and red intermixed in the middle. So that's 
what the actual yarn will look like when you're done. So don't be surprised when one half is mostly red and the other one is mostly green. But when you get to the opposite end, it's a variegated of, of the two colors. Okay, the final step is the mittens. As you see, I've already got one mitten pretty much finished and the other one, I'm at the point where I'm ready to start sewing down the side. So what you would do is while you're, the last of your stitches are on your needle, you slide those stitches onto a sewing needle. And then go through one last time, give it a little extra security and pull it tight. And then after that, you would just sew up your sides, get the edges as much as possible. And you sew until you get all the way to the bottom. I'm not going to do that. I'm you can figure that part out yourself as far as finishing up the sewing. And it's hard to sew standing up when I'm so used to sewing while sitting down. Anyway, well, that's how you get it started. And you work it all the way down. And then you're going to have this because your seam is back here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little tassel. I mean, a little chain tie and we're going to put a little mini tassel on the end let me see if i can move this up a little bit okay we're going to make this little tassel so i've got one started i've got five stitches left to go on the chain you do 70 of these one two three four five and you trim off your tail okay so now what you'll do in order to finish the tassel, uh, normally you would sew this back through here, but it doesn't look as clean and neat. I like to make it a little tassel and incorporate the tail in the tassel. I found that gives it a nice finish. So you get your uh, yarn, fold it in half, and then fold it in half over your finger so you have four. Then you insert your crochet hook in the first chain, pull the yarn through, and then pull all five through that loop and pull it tight. I'll do one more. Grab another piece of yarn, fold it in half. Fold it in half over your finger, pick up your chain, put your hook through the very last one, put it through the loop on your finger, pull that loop through, and then bring all five through that loop, and then pull it tight. And then trim off. And there you go. Then when you get ready to put it on here, you want to count six holes, six holes. One, two, three, four. Try again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so through five and six, put your hook. Pick up one of your chains, pull the better part of it through, leave a little bit out, and go to your next two, pull your chain through it, go to your next two, you want to make sure your seam is on the right side of the last hole you put your crochet hook through, there. Now we're going to do the last six, so you're going to do the Grab the next two, go through the next two, pull it through, and then you go through the last two, pull it through, and you're ready to go. Oh, 
kind of hard to show and do at the same time. I usually do this as for presentation purposes. There. And your one is done. And of course, then you want to finish your other one. And you will have a complete set. Thank you for watching. Also, I thought I'd let you know, when you pull out the yarn where your um, flower is, and you pull it all the way to the next flower, there is enough yarn to do, starting with the flower, do your entire booty all the way to the bottom. And then you would use that half of flower that I showed you the last time and attach it to the remainder of that same piece of yarn that you unwound and it will make the mitten for you with that other little piece of flower. So that's a way to really conserve. As you can see, I do have a little bit left. I don't have a lot, but I do have some yarn left after making the jacket, the hat, a pair of booties, and a pair of mittens. And if you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to it, and share with your friends. Also, there is another short video out there on how to make the booties. And there's also a video out there on how to make this little tie, just in case you need to see a quickie on it. Once you've completed the whole set, you'll have a jacket, a hat, a pair of booties, and a pair of mittens. Now, sometimes you wind up using part of another ball because you're making the larger size or your knitting techniques require more yarn. In that case, you can always make another set of booties. You can make another set of mittens. You can make little headbands for little girls. Or you, if you don't have enough of the flowers, you can always make them plain. You can use uh, one color on the top, another color on the bottom for the booty, uh, the mittens, or same with these. You can use one color on the top and another color on the bottom. As you can see, there's three shades in every ball of Baby Blossom. Or you can make them all solid, like these, I know this isn't Baby Blossom, but you can make it all solid, so therefore your star stitches really stand out, which is another nice feature. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy my videos. Keep tuned because there will be more. Just give me time.